Welcome, I am Ovi. Come join me as I build my first ever raised bed for my future garden. Clouds crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. I will be building many raised beds for my vegetable garden, and they're gonna go right in this area. I'm going to be following a very basic design and these beds are going to be 4 feet wide by 8 feet long by 24 inches high. I'll be making this bed and all the others quite high because I have rabbits. I have many rabbits in the area and I'm looking at their home right now. They're under, they're living under my shed which is only maybe 15 feet away and that's the shed over there. As many of you know, those who have been following me for many years, I've always had a garden, a small garden, in the city and in the suburbs for as long as I can remember, many decades. But my gardens in the city and the suburbs were always quite small. And as you notice, I have a lot of land here. I've been at this property for the past maybe seven, eight months, and there is a lot of land where I can build raised beds or I can plant right in the ground if I choose to. But I prefer raised beds. I think it's a lot easier. So each one of these boards is eight inches high and I'm gonna stack them three high. So what I'm gonna do on the first board, I'm gonna cut it right in the middle. First I'm gonna measure. So now I have the two ends, which are four feet wide. All right guys, so now I'm ready to put them together. This is my four feet long. This is gonna be the width of my bed. And this is my eight foot long uh, board. So there's one or two ways you can do this. You can either uh, put the four foot board on the outside, like so, or you can do it on the inside. But because this is a shorter board, you want it on the outside, okay? And you want to use at least a three inch screw. So an inch and a half is going to go on the first board and the second inch and a half is going to go on the second board. I like to pre-drill a couple of holes before I do this to avoid stripping the screw. Now you can do two screws or three screws, it's up to you. But I'm gonna leave it at two. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and repeat all the sides. So here we go guys, my first ever raised bed. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna make them 24 inches high, meaning that they're gonna be stacked three, one on top of the other. So one thing I should mention is that your screws should be for exterior use. In this case, I have galvanized screws. So check it out. It makes for a nice frame, doesn't it? Now to build the other three. No, excuse me, two, two more. All right guys, here we have the three beds. Now I'm gonna stack them on top of each other. It's a few days later and now it's time for the bracing, right here. I cut it to 23 inches. I mean, you can cut it 24, the height of your bed, or even higher for a decorative look. But I just cut it to like an inch below the top. Now, I do have to mention one thing. These, these beds, the two on top, these sections are way too heavy. As I said earlier on a previous video, I got these from a sawmill. And they are thicker, they are heavier, 
than the stuff that I got at the local box store. Now, the one on the local box store, I can move myself, but I needed my uh, wife's help to move these on top. I could lift them up, but she couldn't. Because they are extremely heavy, I just needed to mention that. I had to wait a few days for family to come from Canada in order for him to help me move this bed or these sections on top of the other, of the, uh, the one at the bottom. So now I have three sections. I have the pressure treated one and the two pine on top. I just wanted to mention that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brace each corner to this bed to avoid each section from shifting or moving too much. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put two screws on each board. Now on this side, I'm just gonna use one screw where all the other screws are. Oh yeah, very sturdy. All right guys, so I need to mention something. In the beginning, I was using the Phillips head screws, but I had to switch over to the, uh, the this type. This is this is called the T25 head screw. Notice that it's a lot different, and this is the bit for that screw. It's way different than a Phillips head. So with this type of screw, it doesn't strip the head, as you saw just a second ago. But with the Phillips head screws, I stripped about half of them. So I'm gonna put these away for now and I'm gonna start using these. And one more thing guys, the wood that, that's on top, the pine wood that I bought at a sawmill, it's a little bit thicker than what you would buy at the uh, local box store. So in this case, I'm gonna use a slightly longer screw. I'm gonna use a three and a half inch and so far it's working great. And I also have to mention that when you're screwing this close to the edge, you should, or you could, uh, use uh, do a pilot hole before you put your screws in. That way, the wood does not split. Okay, it's not it's not required, but as a general idea, it's it's good to do. But over here, because I'm too far from the edge, I really don't need a pilot hole. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention was that the braces are made out of four by four. Now, one of the reasons I made this bed so high and so are gonna be all the others is because it's nice to have them high and you don't have to kneel down all the time. And another thing, you notice the bottom stack is made out of pressure treated wood. Now, the pressure treated wood of today, it is safe compared to the pressure treated wood of the past. And the reason is because they used arsenic a long time ago. Now, the last time that arsenic was used was December 31. 2003 so since then they've used much safer chemicals to treat the wood in this pressure treated wood it's going to be on the ground for many many years could be more than a decade unlike the pine the pine will last probably three four five years if it is touching the ground if it comes into contact with the ground but in this case my pressure treated wood is at the bottom, the pine is above it, so it'll last, I'm hoping that it'll last a, long, a lot longer than just five years. I'll be happy with six or seven years. Another thing you can do with pine, if you have it, or fir, if that's what you're gonna use, is to use a wood preserver, and that will make it last many more years. But use the wood preserver before you fill it in. All right, so let's talk about price. The pressure treated, I bought three boards at $18.28 a piece. That came to a total of $54.84. Now the pine, the untreated wood that I bought at a local sawmill, they cost me $8 a piece. I have six, that's $48. For this job, I also purchased one 4x4, and again, that was $8. And screws, the T25 head screws, and that was $10. So the total price 
for what I built came to 120.84. Now again, you don't have to make them as high as I did. You can make them just eight inches high. You can make them 16 or 24 if you want to do it exactly as I did. Obviously, if you make them smaller, it's going to be a lot cheaper. So the, uh, the screws and all the materials that I use for this build, I'm going to link it below on the uh, description of this video. And yeah, what else can I say, right? All right, guys, so I hope you learned something here today. I certainly did. Like I said earlier, this is my first race bed ever, and I have three more to build, Pro probably a little bit more over the next few months. I, I really want to fill this up with lots and lots of uh, beds for my future vegetable gardens. Right now, I have only four planned, but I have a feeling in the next few weeks, I'm gonna have more than that, so. All right, guys, with that, you guys have a good morning, afternoon, or night. I'll see you later. As you can see, I already have the base for the other three completed.